Welcome back to the workshop. I'm Bill. We're in a little bit of a different situation here today. Um, I've had lots of questions about electrolysis tanks. It's something that I use a lot and I've mentioned in the forums. A lot of other people do. And while I'm sure you can find some videos on there about electrolysis tanks, uh, I've been asked often enough that uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a video about this. Uh, electrolysis is great for rust removal. Um, what you're doing is using a, you can use a car battery or a battery charger or the two in combination with each other. And uh, you take a big plastic tub like this, you fill it with an electrolytic solution which allows electrons to move back and forth between your negative and your, your positive uh, leads. And um, you basically uh, uh, turn the iron oxide, that's rust, back into iron. Uh, and what you end up with, uh, for example, on these stove grates, they're nice and rusty, uh, not too bad. These will clean up really nicely in the e-tank. Uh, but what happens is this uh, rust that's on here just turns into a black powder that you can then wash off or scrub off very easily with a wire brush or steel wool. Uh, electrolysis will also get rid of the, the, any crud that's on here. It does a pretty good job loosening that up. But the other beautiful thing about electrolysis is that it's great for stripping paint. So if you've got a stove, I'm, I'm not going to strip this because this one's in good shape, but I've got it here because I'm working on it and I can, I can use it as an example to show you what we do. Um, put this in the electrolysis tank for 24 hours or sometimes even less, and uh, the paint will usually just come off in sheets. So, uh, it's a cheap thing to do, it's very easy to do. Uh, I know I felt intimidated before I did it, and once I did it, I thought, wow, why have I been using paint stripper and, and wire brushes and all of that all this time to get rid of rust? Uh, this is so much easier, it just takes a little time. So, I think this whole setup cost me about $20, $25, and if you, if you go to a scrap metal yard and find some, some steel to use for your anode, uh, you may even be able to get it for free or close to free, it would be even less than that. Um, I went to the Habitat for Humanity Restore locally and I just picked up an old Rubbermaid tote. I think it cost a dollar. Um, I did have to use some epoxy to patch a couple holes that I didn't realize were in the bottom. I've got a 10 amp battery charger. I think that was five dollars also at the Restore. Uh, and um, down at the bottom here I've got a piece of steel flat bar. That I actually bought at the hardware store and I want to say it was ten or fifteen dollars. Um, so, what you want to do, again, get a, 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 a big plastic container. Um, because I'm a stovey and I work on a lot of stoves, I wanted something large enough for a whole stove. Um, this will also do three burner stoves, and in fact, the large format three burner stoves like the, the 446, um, I've, I've stripped those in here as well. It's just you have to put them in at an angle and do one end at a time. Um, but this is large enough, I can easily put one of these two burner stoves in. Um, so, uh, if you want to just do lanterns, or if you're doing, some people use them for cast iron, uh, electrolysis is great for cleaning and de-rusting cast iron. Uh, if you're using it for tools and things like that, you can get a five gallon bucket and, uh, and just use that as your, uh, your bucket. And in fact, for sacrificial metal, I keep intending to make a smaller one like that to do lantern founts. I would just take an old stove like this that's, that's uh, uh, gone beyond repair, uh, probably strip the paint off with electrolysis here, cut it up and uh, fold it or, or, or mold it into a round piece to go around the inside of the, the five gallon bucket and use that as my sacrificial metal in the anode. But this is what I've got here because I usually do stoves. So um, once you've got your bucket, you need to get some sacrificial metal uh, It needs to be steel. Uh, like I said, I got this piece of flat bar at the hardware store. I bent it so that it fits around the perimeter and sits in the bottom of this tub. And there was a little bit left over, so I went ahead and cut that off, drilled a hole, and this is where I, I attach my, uh, my positive lead to the battery charger. Uh, the next time I do this, if I need to do it over again, I would uh, extend this up higher because uh, you want your, um, your leads or the, the positive lead needs to be out of the solution. If it's in the solution, you'll notice this is, this is pretty nasty looking. Um, it rusts, uh, it needs to be cleaned off periodically. Uh, eventually it needs to be replaced as the, the steel is depleted. 
Um, I don't know how long they'll take. I've been using this one for a few years. Um, but ideally, you want to keep your, your positive lead out of the solution because it will rust and deteriorate just like this. Uh, you may come out and wonder why your electrolysis tank suddenly isn't working, and when you pick up the lead, you'll see it's just a bare wire hanging there because the, the, the clamp itself has, has deteriorated off, or the wires have deteriorated. Um, so uh, if I did this again, I'd make this significantly longer so that it, it stuck up. Uh, in the meantime, what I do is I just use a wire. Uh, this, I'm, because I'm doing uh, uh, stove grates, uh, it's not very deep, so it'll be okay this time. So I put that down in the, in the tub. The positive lead from the battery charger goes on there. The negative goes on to uh, whatever we're, we're removing rust and paint from. And I've got two grates here. So what I'm going to do is lay them on top of each other, one upside down, one right side up, so that they, they sort of mesh together. set that down in here, make sure your anode is submerged, make sure that uh, the, the piece you're de-rusting um, doesn't touch the, the anode. We've got contact there. Now, here's the thing. This is just water. I've put about 15 liters of water in here, which is enough to submerge my anode and the piece I'm working on. But water isn't a good uh, water isn't a good electrolytic solution. So what, what you're trying to do is pass charge through the water between the anode and, and the piece you're working on. So you need an electrolytic solution. So I've got about a liter of water here. I've added about a third of a cup of baking soda. Normally I use washing soda, but we're in the midst of this um, quarantine thing and I'm out of washing soda. So baking soda should work just fine. Uh, you want uh, roughly a third to half a cup for every 20 liters, or that would be about five gallons. Um, in this case, this is a case where more is not necessarily better. Uh, if you make the solution too strong, depending on the battery charger you've got, you could uh, burn it out. Um, I, I had another battery charger I used to borrow from a friend uh, and if my electrolytic solution was too strong, uh, the, the battery charger would overheat and shut off. And uh, so this doesn't seem to have that problem, but uh, basically if, if, it's, if you can see it bubbling away, you know it's working. So I'm gonna pour this in. I've dissolved the baking soda in boiling water. I've also added hot water, or I've, I've put in hot water in the tank. It will start bubbling. That shows you that it's working. It doesn't need to bubble a lot, and even on your battery charger, you'll see on, on mine, it's still almost registering zero, um, but you can check to make sure it's working if you disconnect one of the leads or one of the clamps and the needle drops all the way down. You know you were getting something. It doesn't take much, uh, and this process should take, uh, for a stove grate, um, probably three or four hours is, is plenty. Um, you could leave it in there. I mean, it won't hurt to leave it in longer. If you're stripping something like this, um, I usually leave them in for anywhere from 16 to 24 hours or so. Uh, sometimes you may take it out and, and uh, hit it with a, a wire brush and a hose uh, just to get any paint off. Um, the electrolysis seems to work to remove paint. Um, the, the bubbling action gets under there and loosens it. So sometimes it comes off in nice sheets, other times it just loosens it and you'll still have to scrub it with a wire brush or scrape it a bit. Um, it just depends, I guess, on how they were painting them that day. Um, and the solution usually, I find, lasts a few days. Uh, and uh, when it stops bubbling or when you notice it isn't working very well, then it's time to, to uh, replenish or, or, or um, re replace your electrolytic solution uh, so that it, it works again. Um, it does sort of deplete. Now, one thing I want to show you, um, because the electrolysis works best on the surfaces that are closest to your, your anode. So for example, on a stove, you'll find that uh, with the anode surrounding this, uh, you'll, the, the, the outside will uh, de-rust and the paint will loosen up quite quickly. It won't loosen up so quickly on the inside, and you may have to leave it in quite a while for that to happen. 
So one thing I've started doing over the years, if I'm, if I'm concerned about that, again, at the ReStore, I found these really cheap. I've got a couple of old plastic heater vents, so they're non-conductive. Took a, a drink bottle, put that as an insulator on the side. And I found some chain. I think this is another five dollars. And you can take this. You can lay that chain on the side. Might organize it a little more carefully if we were really doing this. Um, you just don't want it to touch the the, ins the metal on the stove. And then you can drape the, the rest of it over your anode on the outside. And that will conduct the, the current into the stove body itself. You've got some sacrificial metal in here now, and that will help de-rust the inside of the stove more quickly. So I'm going to let this stew away for a while, and we'll come back and look at how it's going. All right, here we are. We're about four hours, not quite four hours later after we put this in. Uh, you can see it's bubbling away. Uh, there's some goo or brown uh, sudsy type stuff on the top. Uh, that's the rust coming off uh, and um, you can see there's that metal starting to shine through there. Now one of the grates uh, someone used a, looked, like, looked like maybe a grinder and sanded it a bit um, on the top side so that's some of that shiny stuff you see. Uh, but we're about ready to take this out, take it outside, hose it down, uh, brush it off with a wire brush and hit it with some steel wool and we'll see what it looks like. All right, this would be why I love the E-Tank. So here's our grate, taking it out. Uh, all I did was hose it down, and I gave it a little rub down with some steel wool. Really no elbow grease, just a wipe down. Uh, it could polish up just a little bit more uh, with the steel wool if I, if I did a little more. Uh, but you can see even the plating is still in good shape on much of this. Um, so uh, this is why I love the E-Tank. Uh, this is just a simple grate. Uh, but you can put a whole stove body in there, it'll take the rust off just like this uh, and uh, strip the paint as well if you need to. Uh, lantern founts as well, you can do this with cast iron or old tools. Um, so that's the E-Tank. I uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you found it helpful. See you next time.